Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India takes over G20 presidency. PM Modi holds key bilateral meetings in Indonesia. Pakistan's foreign minister decries national obsession over army chief appointment. And parents across South Asia worry about children's future as world population hits 8 billion. And now for all the details, Indonesia on Wednesday handed over the G20 presidency to India for the coming year at the Bali summit, with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi terming it a matter of pride for every Indian citizen. PM Modi also held key bilateral meetings with leaders of UK, Australia and France, among others, before wrapping up his visit. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was handed over the presidency for the next year's G20 summit by Indonesian President Joko Widodo as the forum summit in Bali concluded on Wednesday. In his closing remarks at the summit, PM Modi said it is a matter of pride for every Indian and the country's G20 presidency will be inclusive, ambitious, decisive and action-oriented. And together we will make G20 a catalyst for global change. India will officially assume G20 presidency for one year period from December 1. Bharat ki G20 adhakshta inclusive, ambitious, decisive or action oriented hogi. Excellency, agle ek saal mein hamara prayatna rahega ki G20 naye vicharon ki parikalpna ke liye और सामूहिक एक्शन को गति देने के लिए एक ग्लोबल प्राइम मूवर की तरह काम करे। Apart from addressing the working sessions of the forum, PM Modi also held several key bilateral meetings with his counterparts on its sidelines, including with Australia's Anthony Albanese, Singapore's Lee Sian Lung, Italy's Georgia Meloni, and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to boost ties. In his first ever meeting with newly appointed British PM Rishi Sunak. PM Modi said they discussed ways to bolster trade between the two countries. He also held in-depth discussions with French President Emmanuel Macron to boost cooperation in defence, nuclear energy and food security. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has termed the obsession over the appointment of next army chief unfortunate. Being upfront with his views, he criticised the politics happening over the appointment process and said the speculation and gossips won't help in growth of the nation. With the Pakistan Army Chief Kamar Javed Bajwa's tenure coming to an end on November 29, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has termed the speculation and gossips over the appointment of his successor as unfortunate. Talking to reporters, Bilawal said that the obsession with the appointment process will not help in the nation's growth or its democracy. His remarks came after opposition PTI chief Imran Khan alleged PM Shehbaz Sharif had been consulting his brother, PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif, over the selection of the new army chief, violating the secret act. The ruling coalition has denied any such involvement of Elder Sharif. जिस तैनाती की आप बात कर रहे हो काफी अरसा से इस पे गैर जरूरी सियासत किया जा रहा है चाहे वो ऑपोजिशन की तरफ जैसे भी हो हर तरफ से इस पे गैर जरूरी तौर पे सियासत किया जा रहा है मैं समझता हूँ कि आइन आइन और कानून के तहत जैसे इस काम को चलना चाहिए वैसे ही चलना चाहिए ना हमें या हमारे इतिहादियों में से किसी को जलसा में खड़ा होकर इन किस्म के मुतालबात नहीं करने चाहिए और ना ही हमारा अपोजिशन में से किसी को इस इशू को मतनाज़ा बना के सियासत करना चाहिए 
Meanwhile, Pakistan's defense minister Khwaja Asif, talking to reporters, said there's no favorite for army chief's post. He added that appointment process will take place on November 18, 19, after the army sends the nomination. The office of chief of army staff has held importance for a very long time, making the appointment important issue for political parties. The military has directly ruled the country for almost half of Pakistan's nearly 75-year history. Even during civilian rule, it dominates security and foreign policy. Activists in Gilgit, Baltistan, have held a series of protests condemning the recent arson attack on a girls' school in Diyamar. and have called on authorities to stop patronization of terrorists they said if the authorities had taken action against extremist elements in a similar attack in 2018 this incident would not have happened activists in gilgit baltistan have held several protests over the past week after an arson attack on a girls school in diyamar district of the illegally occupied region calling out authorities for patronizing terrorists by not taking any action activists of diyamar youth movement said if the authorities had taken action against terrorists for similar attacks on schools in 2005 and 2018 this would not have happened they said such attempts by extremist elements have derailed development in the region and the government must ensure the right to education तो लोकल अथॉरिटीज हैव स्टार्टेड रेस्टोरेशन वर्क सो फार नो ग्रुप हैज क्लेम्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर द अटैक इन दियामर where taliban linked militants opposed to girls education are active pakistani taliban and allied islamist militants regard girls education as anti islam the taliban has claimed that an unidentified man killed a pakistani soldier on november 13 at the spin boldak chaman border crossing which later led to clashes between security forces on both the sides a spokesperson said a high level investigation has been launched into the incident The Taliban has said in a statement that an unidentified man killed a Pakistani soldier on November 13 at the Spin Boldak Chaman crossing which later led to clashes between border forces on both sides. Taking to Twitter, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid on Tuesday said that the Islamic Emirate expresses sorrow over the incident and has appointed a delegation to identify the suspect and investigate the incident, adding that attempts will be made to prevent such incidents in the future the video of the pakistani border guard being fired upon has gone viral on social media the major border crossing between afghanistan and pakistan has been reportedly closed indefinitely for trade and transit after the clashes occurred since the taliban took over afghanistan in 2021 clashes have taken place between its security forces and those of pakistan while militants have attacked pakistani forces Disputes linked to the border have been a bone of contention between the neighbors for decades. The Taliban has attempted to block Pakistan's plans to finish fencing the 1,615-mile border, which was drawn by British colonial rulers with no consideration for the Pashtun tribes it divided. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's central bank governor has said that the island nation has avoided a crash landing of its economy by applying macroeconomic measures. Speaking during a post-budget discussion, he also emphasized the need of implementing the 2023 budget proposals to increase crucial foreign exchange. Sri Lanka's central bank governor Nandalal Virasinghe has said that the island nation has avoided a crash landing of its economy making it a soft landing by applying macroeconomic measures. Virasinghe speaking at a news conference on Tuesday emphasized the need of implementing the 2023 budget proposals and fiscal and monetary reform measures to increase crucial foreign exchange inflows and avert the reoccurrence of the crisis. 
Treasury Secretary K. M. Mahinda Srivardhana also said the country is facing a challenge to stabilize the economy and the private sector has a vital role to play. This is where Treasury Secretary was important that we are asking our creditors to share part of the pain. But it's not fair that we are asking them to pay, you know, share the pain on behalf of us. We also have to show that we also share part of the pain. President Ranil Vikramasinghe, unveiling the annual budget on Monday, said that the Sri Lankan economy can turn around by the end of 2023 if budget policies are followed. The government, among other targets, aim to reduce debt to less than 100% of the GDP, reach annual growth of 3 billion US dollars from new exports over the next 10 years. The new reforms and debt restructuring are the preconditions for disbursement of an IMF bailout worth $2.9 billion to tackle soaring inflation, a weakening currency and low foreign exchange reserves. Bangladesh reported another eight deaths from dengue fever on Tuesday, bringing the total number of fatalities to 213 this year in the country. The South Asian nation has recorded 49,922 dengue cases so far in 2022. The Bangladesh government on Tuesday reported another eight deaths from dengue fever, bringing the total number of fatalities due to the vector-borne disease to 213 this year across the country. According to a report from the Directorate General of Health Services, the death toll included 72 in November, 8 in October, 3 in September, 11 in August, 9 in July and 1 in June. The country recorded 49,922 dengue cases this year. The number of patients was 28,429 last year and 105 of them died. Symptoms of dengue which usually begin 4 to 6 days after the infection and last for up to 10 days include sudden high fever, severe headaches, fatigue, nausea, vomiting or easy bruising. Health Minister Zahid Malik stressed the need for strengthening preventive measures earlier this month, saying that controlling dengue is difficult without public awareness. He said as the weather is different from before, due to climate change, the dengue outbreak is still rampant amid intermittent rains in the country, making things more difficult. Experts believe the actual number of dengue patients and the death toll is much higher as the official figures leave out those who do not get hospitalized while many people do not get tested. With the world population crossing the 8 billion mark on Tuesday, Parents across South Asia are worried over the future of their newborns. While Bangladesh being densely populated is facing a huge resource shortage, India is approaching to become the most populous country by next year. Parents in the South Asian countries are fretting about the future of their newborns after the United Nations announced that world population has gone past the 8 billion mark on Tuesday. Adil Ahmed, father of a newborn in Dhaka, said he worries how will the future generation cope with the limited resources in his country, Bangladesh, with a population of more than 140 million. Parents in one of the most densely populated nations fear whether they will be able to provide proper education and upbringing under such conditions. <laughs> Meanwhile, in India, mother of a newborn said she believes her baby needs to be extraordinary to tackle the competition in this population boom. Other new parents voice a similar concern. What if their children are deprived of resources in future? As per the government figures, India's population growth has averaged 1.2 percent since 2011. United Nations estimates India may become the most populous country by 2023. I think uh, it will be very difficult for him to, uh, you know, grow. Like uh, it will be populate population is explosion explosive, so which it creates lots of noise and you know other factors are there. It it has uh, lots of competition in education factor and and uh, you know in jobs factors also so for one needs to be grow he needs to be extraordinary in all aspects as looking at the current population rate with a large population of nearly 1.38 billion india is faced with the challenge of creating infrastructure for its rural hinterland 
and transforming its youth bulge into a demographic dividend of a skilled workforce. Thousands of candidates apply for a single post as unemployment rate remains at 7%. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.